Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maika and today we are going to be talking about urban fantasy recommendations. So when it comes to fantasy as a reading genre, it's definitely like, again, split up in like other subgenres and to some people science fiction is even like a subgenre of fantasy. I feel they are separate. <laughs> um, but yeah, when it comes to fantasy, you have high fantasy, low fantasy epic fantasy and urban fantasy and the difference between the two is that urban fantasy has sort of like one foot in our everyday reality so there's like like it's it takes place uh, usually in a city that truly exists and then there are magical elements to it whereas in epic fantasy or high fantasy the entire world is created from scratch by the author and i have found by trying certain things and reading different things that I just love urban fantasy a little bit more than epic fantasy. I'm not saying I don't like epic fantasy. It's just that I find epic fantasy usually harder to get into because you also need to start understanding this world that has been created. Whereas urban fantasy is a lot easier to pick up on because it is very often set in a city or a place that is recognizable. So um, for some books this goes more than others, but I've selected 10 books for my shelves that I like in terms of like a little bit more urban fantasy related, you could say. You do have to know that urban fantasy has a bit of a bad rep, you could say, because not only because, you know, it's low fantasy because not, and the entire world wasn't created from scratch. So some people, I think, then think that authors are a little bit lazy, whereas I find it much more interesting to read urban fantasy because then whatever happens needs to fit the constraints of our world. So whether that be politics or just general physics, it needs to fit. And if that's done well, then I really enjoy it. And urban fantasy is also not exactly known for the representation of women and like minorities in like a fair way. So it's definitely something that authors have been working on and it has improved over the years. However, some of the recommendations that I have, which are books that I personally do enjoy, maybe a little bit questionable to some people that you may not enjoy because certain things are being done or said by characters that are just not very much in line with our 21st century different stance according to everything. So that's definitely something that you do have to bear in mind that urban fantasy is very often thought of as problematic for those reasons and some very famous urban fantasy books are actually not very kind to women, you could say. Um, Let's just talk about these 10 books that I have lying next to me. And I just want to start off, like, I'm not entirely sure whether this first one is urban fantasy or not, but since it's one of my all-time favorite book series, I just quickly wanted to mention Harry Potter because like, this is my very beat up copy that I've had for like 20 years. Um, this book, of course, is set like there is like there are real people, there are muggles and it's still set one foot in the actual world, even though the two worlds are separate ones. So they don't really interact as much as, as you would find in a normal urban fantasy. But I think one of the reasons why Harry Potter till this day is still one of my favorites is because it does have that link to what we know. And I think that that's also why it gelled with me very well. Like I had tried reading other fantasy books until this, and it was just not something that I really enjoyed because I found it difficult to get into the world. And whereas with this, you know, you just kind of plunge in and even though the time he spends at Hogwarts and like a lot of the muggleness is only like used as framing um, for some of the stories, especially the earlier ones, um, I think that it's still... I think it still sort of works. I mean, it, I think it, if in terms of like urban fantasy, high fantasy, like this isn't even like a 50-50 split, it's more going towards like full-on fantasy, but with a real element, and that's what I've always appreciated about this. So yeah, I, I, I try to separate the stacks here a little bit. Another one that I feel is more epic fantasy than urban fantasy, but because it takes place in cities, I think it can still be urban fantasy. However, the only sort of real 
city we get is only there very briefly. Um, but that would be the Darkest Shade of Magic trilogy by V.E. Schwab. This is set in four different kinds of London. There's Grey London, Red London, Black London, and White London. Uh, Black London has been completely obliterated by magic. White London is about to be obliterated by magic. Red London is where magic thrives, whereas in Grey London we get a 18th century London. So I love historical fiction and one of our main characters comes from this London and then as the series progresses this grey London isn't visited all that much anymore. However, that's where the story starts, so especially this first one, I feel has like a part historical fiction and then it becomes fantasy. Um, when this character, like it almost starts a little bit like Oliver Twist and then this character is like taken into this whole world of magic and which is really really interesting so again like harry potter this sort of has one foot in like a real setting but it doesn't completely fuse them together if you'd like however if you are someone who is really looking into getting into fantasy i think a darker shade of magic is one of the best places to start not only because the actual world building is like it, it takes you st there step by step so if you're someone like me who wasn't always very much a fan of like fantasy settings i felt that this worked really really well is this fantasy is it not but i wanted to put a classic in here too dracula by bram stoker and the reason why i actually decided to put this in this video it's perhaps a bit of a weird pick because fantasy didn't really exist yet when Stoker wrote this novel, like as a genre. There were definitely books with fantastical elements and that's definitely what this book is. However, this is very often categorized as a gothic novel and I think that gothic fiction has had an influence on like things like the horror genre, mystery genre, detective genres, but also fantasy. So what is the, the reason that made me put this book in today's video is because one of the things that Stoker did with Dracula was taking this vampire character, which previously would only exist in these like romanticized like stories of like beautiful ruined castles and mysterious women that would be met. So there was always this sort of like not so real element to it. Whereas what he did was he took this vampire and he put it into contemporary London. This book freaked out the masses, or at least the people who were able to read it, because it it made these scary things real. So I think that in terms of like urban fantasy and what you can link it to as like a starting point, I think Dracula would be a nice one because Toker was just really, really clever because this book was published at the end of the 19th century. And just like at the end of the 20th century, when everybody was like, ooh, what's going to happen? New millennium, whoa. When the 19th century turned into the 20th century, people were also nervous about what this new century would bring them. So, uh, and this book was published like just a few years before 1900. So that's why this book, this like whole fin de siècle kind of feel, this element of, oh, we have a mysterious count in this faraway country that sort of is inspired by a historical figure, uh, uh, fi uh, that is sort of inspired by a historical figure that we can trace back through history that might be real, is all of a sudden placed into a real place. So from that perspective, I think Dracula can sort of work as an urban fantasy kind of idea. However, of course, this isn't necessarily a fantasy novel, but I definitely think it is sort of where people got the idea from and um, yeah, good start. Speaking of historical fiction, because I think that this is going to be like the best sort of bridge, way to bridge all of the gaps together, I have actually really, I'm like I'm someone who also really enjoys historical fiction and there are actually quite a few series and books out there, these are all series I think, that fuse historical fiction together with fantastical elements, often also set in cities. <laughs> so that's why I thought we could talk about these. So there is actually, there are two YA, uh, two YA um, series in here and two adult. So let me just start with what's on the top here. And that would be The Strings of Murder. This is the first book in the Frey and McGray series by Oscar the Muriel. This is definitely more historical fiction than it is fantasy. 
that's something you need to know. However, why do I want to put it in this sort of like urban fantasy kind of setting? It's because what this author very cleverly does is take fantastical elements um, that tie in with the murder cases and like the things that these two detectives need to resolve in 19th century Edinburgh. And then it sort of weaves this tale of magic and mystery and fortune tellers and banshees and whatever it is that's going on. But then at the end, it's given a scientific explanation of that, like a scientific explanation of a like science discovery that was made in the 19th century. So it actually makes sense. So that makes it not fantasy because it's actually real. Uh, but for a lot of the book, like until the very end, you are either led to believe or thinking or the main characters think that there is something strange afoot. Are they really witches, you know? So that's why I really think that, again, if you don't like fantasy or maybe if you like fantasy but you don't like historical fiction, um, if you do like detective novels, then this is a good one too. So this kind of takes elements of all of these different things that I really enjoy where it puts together. Is this truly urban fantasy? I don't think so because in the end it never ends up being as fantastical as some of the main characters think, but I think it, it can be put in that category. It's a bit of a stretch, like Dracula, but I, I think it can fit. A book that is definitely more fantasy dystopian is the YA, tri uh, no, it's a quintet, it's five books, Lockwood & Co by Jonathan Strout. This is about teenagers who combat ghosts in this alternate universe where ghosts have become a problem. This mainly takes place in London. And when I spotted this book, because I never hear anyone talking about this, but you sort of see this guy with this like sword on the front and this like historical castle, and it looks a little like Sherlock Holmesian almost. So I was like, is this supposed to be like another take on history? It, I'm not entirely sure, but they kind of give you this alternate universe where ghosts need to be destroyed because if they touch you, you die from ghost touch. And the only people who can see these ghosts are teenagers, children and teenagers. And Look What & Co is the name of the only ghost hunting agency in this world run by teenagers. All the other ones are run by adults. There's this whole conspiracy behind it. There's a lot of politics. Again, is this truly fantasy? Apart from the ghosts, maybe not that much. Um, but yeah, and of course the London is different um, from what you're used to because everything has been altered to make sure that these ghosts can come out at night and there's all these protective wards and it feels Victorian yet still modern at the same time. It's it's a very weird mix of like, what is this world actually? You don't, you never really know. You're never really able to pinpoint it, but that's what I really liked about this. And this is just a really, really great, really fast paced read that I really enjoyed. Then uh, an, I think a urban fantasy series that not a lot of people again talk about is the Invisible Library uh, series by Genevieve Cockman. Each one of the books in this series is set in a different city, in a different either universe or historical time period or sometimes a combination of both. Um, because this, in this world, we have the invisible library that Irene, our main character, works for, and the aim of the library is to maintain order between chaos and order. And order is represented in this world by dragons, and the chaos is represented by fae. If there are too many fae in the world, then it's chaotic. If there are too many dragons in the world, it's too, like, strict and orderly. Um, and there, so in order to make sure that these worlds don't succumb to either one, make sure that the powers are balanced, uh, the invisible library exists. Um, in our first book, we are uh, having this more like steampunk version of 19th century London. In another one of the books, we get a different take on like 16th century Venice. There's one that's set in like, I think, 1920s Chicago with a lot of machine guns and we also have a few that are set in things like Paris and things like that so each one of these books has its own setting its world that it's set in and I think that very much like Lockwood & Co it's 
giving you like the historical setting of that city but then there's always like this fantastical element to it like that steampunk version of London for instance um, I think these books are really fun, very cleverly written. I do have to say that now that I've read a few of them, I'm kind of like, yeah, yeah, I kind of get it. But each one of these is just super entertaining and fun. And because they are set in historical places, it again sort of ties some of my favorite things together, which is fantasy kind of elements with historical fiction. And it's got a kick-ass female protagonist. What else do you want? Another book with a kick-ass female protagonist is the Jacoby series by William Ritter. This is a YA trilogy that again, no, it's four books. It's not a trilogy, it's four books. I thought it was a trilogy at first, but it, there's four of them. This is one that again, very randomly picked up. And I don't hear anybody talking about this as well, but this follows, what's her name again? Abigail Rook, who just arrives in New England in New Fiddleham. Yes, that's the name of the town. And she meets Jacoby, and Jacoby is a detective of the weird and the occult. Like, if something strange happens, he's called to the scene. This is set in 19th century New England. Um, it features dragons, it features ghosts, it features fae, it features different realms, it fe features vampires, it features all of those things. Um, each story, again, sort of like each book has its own little story inside it that it wraps up. But in the end, all of those stories together form uh, one larger plot that is like an overarching storyline for all four. I really enjoyed reading these because they are YA, they are super fast paced. I like the like the, the banter between Jacoby and Abigail. Uh, this has a really strong cast of characters and it's super enjoyable. And I love also how this has really great friendship between men and women and not just like romantic relationships, which a lot of YA books insist on. This is just like friendship based, which I loved. And then we're gonna start with like, I think uh, are some of the more well-known urban fantasy series. One that I wanted to feature here that I haven't read yet, so I'm not entirely sure yet whether I like it, but I picked it up because of one of the other books I'm about to show you. Uh, and that would be The Last Smile in Sunder City by Luke Arnold. This is a debut author, so I don't know anything about this. It says that like, the blurb is what got me when, why I picked this up. I just found this at my local bookstore. Um, three things you should know before you hire me. Sobriety costs extra. My services are confidential. I don't work for humans. And I was like, okay. I'm not sure what city this is set in, but this happens to be styled very similarly to the Ben Aronovich's Rivers of London series, which is probably why they did that on purpose, to appeal to people who like that. Um, the magic is never coming back. So this has magic. This has a detective. A pair, I hope a morally gray character, because those are my favorites. Um, so I think that this can, again, give me what I want. I'm not even sure whether this is more hyster historical in its setting. I know nothing about this, apart from the fact that the blurb on the back just caught my attention. And that's why I wanted to read it. And it sounds like urban fantasy, so I wanted to show it here. And then for my like two favorites, and I think the most infamous urban fantasy uh, um, series is also one of the longest running fantasy series on the planet, and that's Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files. This has like, I don't know, 20 books or something crazy like that. I think there are still books coming out in this series. Uh, this is the first one called Stormfront, and this was recommended to me by a friend. Uh, he bought me this for my birthday a few years ago, and I started reading it, and I was like, yep, I like it. The issue that a lot of people have with this book, especially women, is that Harry, he's a bit of a tool. He isn't like, he isn't the most empathic, empathetic, empathetic character on the planet when it comes to women and their feelings, you could say. And I'm not sure if that's something that's like, I feel that now that I've read like the first four or five books, he's starting to become a bit more mature, I think. Uh, as we also get to see more of this world and what he's trying to do to save his girlfriend and stuff like that. I think there is a, lo a little bit more character development as the books progress. That's also what I've been told, which is why I sort of kept reading. But especially the first few, you can go like, really? Why would you just describe a woman like that? Like, in the writing and all that, it, it gets a little bit problematic at times. Um, however, what I sometimes just want is a fast-paced, plot-driven, 
fight to death in almost every single book. <laughs> and that's what this gives you. This is written like a movie. So I like this just sucks you in and then it, you just want to keep reading. At least that's how I feel. I think this is really funny at times as well. Like it makes me laugh out loud. loud. And so far each book has like featured a particular fantastical realm. So there were vampires in one. There was the, this, the last one I read was more like face centered. And in the meantime, we have Harry, who's just a wizard living in Chicago, trying to not get killed all the time by all of these different factions of the supernatural world. So this is just a, a series that I really enjoy. I definitely want to keep reading all of these. I do have to say that because of the way it's written and it's quite you know, this is a guilty pleasure, you could say. It's just really fast-paced, action-packed sort of book. Um, this is what helps me get out of reading slumps very often. I tend to only read one or two of these a year. I feel that if you read too many of these in one go, then it's going to get very tedious, but I keep it fun for myself by not reading them too often. And then last but not least, I already mentioned Rivers of London, Ben Aronovich, this Peter Grand series. I keep raving about it. Again, on booktube, not a lot of people talk about this, but this is a best-selling author. So I'm like, where is everyone at? Again, these earlier books have been critiqued just like the Jim Butcher, but being not that friendly to women and the way they are represented in it. But I love how, especially in the later books, we get some more diverse characters in here. Peter Grant himself is quite a diverse character too. And I just love these. Again, super action-packed. And this, you know, this is very American. And this is very British. So if you like dry humor <laughs> and like the kind of like Sherlock Watson kind of banter from like the Sherlock series with um, Ben, uh, what's his name? Benedict Cumberbatch and uh, Martin Freeman. That's what I get from this. This is so incredibly funny. It just takes all of the nerd culture and it just pushes it up high, especially in the last one. I've read all of these books. I love it. I can't wait for the next one to come out. It's set in modern day London. Every book takes place in a different area of London or sometimes just outside of London. And it's about Peter Grant who, in his first book, has just graduated police academy and then finds out he can do magic. And then he finds out there is a special department in the London the Metropolitan Police that deals with all the weird stuff. And then he gets to join that. So, and then the adventure sort of uh, develops from there. So yeah, each story again, within each book, you get one story, but there is a little bit of an overarching storyline. I do feel you can read these separately. In fact, before I knew what the exact order was of the books, like very early on, I did read like two or three in the wrong order, which is fine. It's just certain things don't really start making sense. Um, but yeah, you are able to read the, like you can just pick one up if you'd like, if you just want the story. However, it helps with understanding some more of the character characterization and the growth that the especially main character grow, uh, goes through and where some people come from and how they are all related um, if you read the entire thing. Because especially by the last one, I mean, certain things are no longer explained and uh, then it's uh, good to go back to the first one. I just love these. I know that some people find them problematic, but sometimes I just... Like, I'm also someone who just likes, you know, an action movie with, like, lots of shooting. Like, that, that's, like, my favorite thing. <laughs> so, sometimes... I, I don't always need, like, perfectly represented worlds. I... I sometimes I, I just want to enjoy a book because I enjoy a book. There, there's a time and place for everything, you know what I mean? So yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was useful. Maybe you were able to pick up some urban recommendation um, maybe you were able to pick up some urban recommendations for yourself and then I hope you would like to stay tuned because I make one new video a week over on this channel. I know I missed two uploads but it was vacation. I didn't really have anything else to film and we had a heat wave so I really couldn't be bothered. In fact I hit a major reading slump in August but we'll get to that in my wrap-up next week. So I hope to, you would like to stay tuned to see you in my next one. Bye-bye!